It is a very important edition of the KSO Show today, which is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. As I'm sitting here with Derek Young, Grant Flanders, Logan Mance, we're going to really, really dig in and be serious. And I actually mean that about this K-State-Oklahoma State game this Saturday. Uh, Mississippi State two weeks ago was a lot of fun. It was a big-time performance by the Wildcats, but we're into the Big 12 schedule now, guys. This is a big game. So, Flando, like we're doing football. I'm excited today. for it. I'm it's excited to dig deep, like you said. And... Uh, Big 12 football is here, Logan. I mean, it's <laughs> exciting stuff. It is. <laughs> That's why we got Logan here, because when Flanders says something, we need a young buck to follow it up. Bam, there it is, Logan. Derek Young's here working away. Appreciate you. Derek, how you doing, man? Good to have you back on the KSO Show. Been trying to phase you out a little bit on this, but you keep you keep coming back. I'm just a little mouse. I'm actually working on these power rankings that you hinted at. See, that's getting prepared. You know, these young bucks over here, they think they can just sort off the top of their head. That's not how it works. (laughs) At the end of the show, I do want to go through, like, our Big 12 power rankings to kind of see where you think teams sit right now because that's interesting to me as we've had some Big 12 play and now move into Big 12 play for the rest of the season. But I want to really break down K-State, Oklahoma State. I'm going to use a lot of Flando, a lot of DY. I'm just going to ask you different questions. If I disagree with you, I might stick in a little thought of my own, but I'm going to let you guys dominate this. So I'm going to start with Derek. I think in a general broad sense, people are going to look at this game and say, Okie State plays a three-man front, haven't been great against the run this year, K-State's been an elite running team, that's going to be the difference. I'm not even saying I disagree with that. Is that how you feel about it? Is that kind of the biggest matchup if you're looking for K-State to win this game? Is the K-State running game against the Okie State defense? Or is it something else you talk about to me? I, For me, I think it's just about containing Sanders on the ground, to be honest. That's where I look at where Kansas State can win the game because – Passing wise, I think they almost want to force Oklahoma State to pass the ball. That's kind of where I'm at. I know everyone's like, oh my gosh, you know, Tyle Walls, he's really, really good. Um, I think it's better for Kansas State if he has a big day than it is for if Sanders runs off 80 rushing yards or Hubbard runs for over 200. I, I feel the same personally. I mean, and all those guys, Spencer Sanders. Spencer Sanders. I got so <laughs> worried. I got so correct. I got so worried about not saying Chuba Hubbard <laughs> that I, I I struggled on Spencer Sanders, Tylen Wallace. I mean, all three are fantastic players. Derek's been saying that Tylen Wallace is maybe the best receiver in the Big Twelve for a long time, and that may well be true. But I still agree. I still think you'd rather see a scenario where you have a, a redshirt freshman quarterback who turned it over a couple times last week, trying to beat you through the air than letting you know Chuba Hubbard destroy you on the ground. So I'll kind of ask you a similar thing, Flanders. I'll give you a couple of numbers um, to kind of talk about what I'm talking about. So K-State on offense averages, I believe, 280 yards per game rushing. Oklahoma State's giving up 175 point, almost 176. That's a high number for a defense. You have an offense, again, that's mm-hmm. rolling up on the ground, a defense that's struggling to stop the run. Is it as simple as saying, and there's caveats to everything, but if K-State dominates on the ground, they should be in good shape? I absolutely believe that, yes. And you look at a guy like James Gilbert, who's taken the load these past few games to start the season off, I think he's a guy you rely on a lot this game to to uh, get into the end zone as much as possible and, and pick up first downs. I mean, other guys like Jordan Brown and Harry Trotter are going to be there to make things happen, but I think a lot of this game is going to rely on James Gilbert and Skylar Thompson running the football, and it's going to be a huge piece if they can handle the ground yes dale they (laughs) will be in good shape that's a definitive answer from grant flanders you can take that to the bank we'll stay on a similar topic derek as we're looking at k-state's offense against Oklahoma state's defense pff numbers you know take them for what they are grain of salt i totally agree with that but if you're looking at those k-state's lowest score on offense is receiving their receivers is 74.8 that's not a terrible score by the way that's actually a fine score but it is their lowest score on offense a 74.8 Oklahoma State's best score on defense is pass coverage, an 86.9. That's best in the Big 12, one of the best in the country. They have two really good corners. So what I'm saying is PFS telling us, Derek, that Oklahoma State's great in the secondary, K-State's average at receiver. Is that what scares you as a K-State fan is maybe they can shut down K-State's running game if they're allowed just to throw their corners on an island against Dalton Schoen and Malik Knowles? Yeah, that's a concern, but more because if they can do that, then they can devote so many more players to the box to take away Kansas State's run game, which is, you know, the bread and butter and how they're going to make their, uh, make their money on that side of the ball. So it's not that I'm worried that Kansas State's not going to be able to throw for 200 yards. I'm worried that Oklahoma State's not going to have to devote enough, enough guys to the passing game where they can just clog the box and, you know, basically go nine on six, nine on seven in the run game, and Kansas State's not going to have a uh, numbers advantage. It's kind of what we talked about off air, you know, Kansas State to be able to pass the ball in this game and probably throughout the year, so it's probably not fair to just kind of isolate this contest on its own, but they're probably going to have to trick offenses or out-scheme them or out-coach them or out-guess them on what they're going to do, and I think that's probably no truer 
this season and what you know we'll see on Saturday. And I didn't mean to set it up this way, but I appreciate you finishing with that because it is going to take – I think K-State's athletes can make plays. I'm not saying it has to be all smoke and mirrors against Oklahoma State, but I do think it's going to take Skylar Thompson making some very accurate plays, mm-hmm. some very heady plays, throwing the football against the secondary. And we're talking about PFF numbers. They think he's the best quarterback in the country. So, Flanders – Moving back to you. Yep. I've told you, you know, K-State's corners are really good. Uh-huh. K-State's receivers are, are have played well, but yep. they're not seen as a strength in the offense. Is Skylar Thompson good enough to make that not matter and make K-State's passing game still win this battle, even if it's not about yards, but about just being successful throwing the football? I think he is, yeah. I think he's shown through the first few games that he has the ability to, to be the best quarterback in the Big 12. Not saying he is by any means, but, yeah, PFF numbers would suggest he's been – up there at the top. At least top. he's played that way. Yeah, right. so yeah. I think he can be that good. I also think there's times where I think Malik Knowles could possibly uh, get open and allow Skylar Thompson to feed him a nice ball downfield. But I do think this is a game where you're going to have to see the tight end become more into play because uh, you get him lined up, a, a tight end lined up on a corner or a, a nickel or even a linebacker, you could have a, a chance to – find them downfield as well so this offense could go to that even more than they have uh, in the first few games and then Jordan Brown out of the backfield too in the passing game is going to have to be major I think Skyler is good enough to find all these people all these guys uh, on the field just gonna be them having to get enough space to to get it there I'm gonna go lightning roundish here and then I won't we'll come back I might come back to all three of you and maybe ask for some explanation maybe I won't so I'm gonna go with all of you I want Derek Flando and Logan to answer in that order. Derek, Flando, Logan, and just say yes or no. You can't say anything else. Don't add a word. Don't add a uh. I swear if you say uh, Logan. <laughs> um, okay. Derek, yes or no. Oklahoma State is a more talented football team than Mississippi State. No. Okay, Flando? Yes. Okay. Yes. We have two yeses and a no, so I'm going to go to the no. I think it's a very – toss-up I could argue for both sides so I don't think anybody's crazy for what they said but I'm gonna go to the no because you're the only one why do you think Mississippi State's more talented or what makes you leads you to believe that K-State's already played a more talented team than Oklahoma State I think Mississippi State probably is not as talented at the skill positions but I think they probably have Oklahoma State covered in nearly every other position on the football field Sands maybe corner on defense but Mississippi State's corners are not that they're fine they're not that bad either so I think Oklahoma State's more talented in terms of big playability on offense. I think that's where they have the edge on Mississippi State. But if you ask me which lines I want better, which linebackers I want more, I want Mississippi State. So clearly what we have here is a 30-year-old mature Derek Young, you know, <laughs> respecting, <laughs> respecting, you know, big picture grinding out yeah. football and a couple of young bucks over here at Logan <laughs> and Flanders who just want to see the speed. What but would I, your I, take? I think I side with with Derek, not to be what you guys think I'm going <laughs> to yeah. be, but I think it's very close. You it know, I think cool. it depends what you're scared of, right? You know, mm-hmm. and that's why I think it's a good question. And that's why I asked it, um, because yeah, I think it's very, very close. I'm going to go to another one. If we get a disagreement, I'll pull one of you in. We're going to go Flanders, then Logan, then Dy. Flanders, Logan, Dy. Yes or no? Kansas State will face a tougher environment Saturday night in Stillwater than it did at Mississippi State. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, no. Ooh. Yes. Okay, Logan. Say, uh. Logan. Logan <laughs> said uh, no. So I mean, now I feel bad picking on Logan here because I don't want to because like you didn't, we didn't, we weren't nice enough to take you to Mississippi yeah, State. To, yeah. But maybe what is it just in your head? You said, hey man, K State. It was a tough environment, Mississippi it was. State. So what about it? Is it the familiarity with Oklahoma State? The fact they've already won there? All those things. What about it makes you think that maybe it's not as tough as going to going to Starkville? Um, it's not as so no. It, that, um, Maybe you answered it the opposite yeah. as you meant. What I, okay, let me ask you this way. Which would be a tougher place to win, Stillwater or Starkville? I think Starkville. Because K-State had a practice having the cowbells in their ear. Sure. They had their practice like that. They haven't been there. Um, can we throw in the weather being a – I mean, if you're going to count the fact that – It sure was hot. Right. That's <laughs> true. Actually, when I was sitting in the back of my mind, I was like, the thing I'd argue is – Maybe the atmosphere is yep. tougher in Stillwater, but I bet the weather was a bigger uh-huh. problem in Starkville. And it was, and that's why I asked it too, because while I would say Stillwater, and I'll be interested to hear why, why Flanders says Stillwater, you can argue Starkville because unfamiliarity, the uniqueness of the cowbell yeah. thing, the weather, the travel length. Like you said, uh, not having an extra week. There's a lot of things you could argue for, but Flanders, I'd be with yeah. you. I think I from mean, a pure atmosphere uh-huh. perspective, Stillwater's a tougher place to play. Yeah, it's one thing, like, 
w- when we were there, you could kind of tell it was a little sparse and it was getting talked about, but you could still hear the cowbells. Oh my gosh, they, they for, were for sure annoying. But my dad even said he talked to some. He was there at the game. He talked to some fans, and they they said this is nothing compared to like SEC play in Starksville. So I think it could have been a uh, Starkville, I know. A way, I think it could have been a way better environment than Stillwater and probably is at its best. Sure, yeah. But like well, but probably. coming this coming weekend I think um I think Stillwater is going to be One thing I didn't crazy. take into account is it being a later game. That too. I mean, uh, that, that, too. that comes into right. play too a lot. The, the, now, the announcers at the Mississippi State game they were even saying like um, it's an early game, yep. and it's hot outside, and maybe that drove people. Right. It probably coming. did. And it drove people out of the stadium before halftime, I think. Yeah. Uh, there just wasn't a whole lot of people there. Kind of a dead environment. But I'll tell you what, pregame, I'm not sure I've heard a louder pregame. Oh, my goodness. Those, those gosh darn cowbells. Oh gosh, they were. That's the thing. There they definitely be, were there. Their actual attendance for that game, I don't know what they announced. I think they announced it at 50 something. It yeah. was probably 30 something. I mean, that place was not even half full. Nope. But when they rang their cowbells, it was loud still. It was with the very loud. I think, I think someone, one of you touched it. And I bet the Mississippi State's best in terms of what they provide environment wise is better than Stillwater's best. Probably so. Yep. Probably so. I think so. When it, when LSU comes to town this year, I bet you that place, if they even come to town, I don't know if they go to Stark, Starksville or not. I'm, gonna, <laughs> Love it. Love I'm it. just going to commit All right. to it. I think they do. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes or that. no. And I'm going to drift back into some more like detailed gamey stuff here in a little bit. Yes or no. If Kansas State wins Saturday night at Oklahoma State, the Wildcats will finish in the top three of the Big 12. I'm going to make it go. I'll make Logan go first. Logan, then Flando, then D.Y. So, again, the question is this. Assuming K-State wins Saturday night, which, of course, is a big assumption. We'll talk more about our predictions and that kind of stuff. But assuming that happens... Will K-State finish in the top three of the Big 12? Yes. Yes from yes. Logan? Yes. D.Y. Come on, old man. Be a, be a, be a crumudgeon and say no way. Come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we got two yeses and a no. So you're still more or less – I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'll see if I'm getting you right. You're still saying that even if they win this game, you probably still see Oklahoma, Texas, and somebody else finishing with a better record than K-State. Yeah, I think Oklahoma and Texas certainly will um, – Having the tiebreaker on Oklahoma State probably knocks them out, but I think you still have some toss-up games left on the schedule in my mind. Fortunately for K-State, the ones, the two that I'm referring to are at home. It's right. Baylor and Iowa State. Right. Um, I would have been with the young guys on this. I think I would have said yes. You know, I think I would have said yes, um, which I'm I really going to – Really gonna tie my or back myself into a corner when I predict him to win later in this podcast. <laughs> so, I mean, I, but, I, I will yeah. say this, and it kind of is a hint at my power rankings at the, at the end of the show. But I've heard this talked about, and I would agree that I think the winner of this game, at least at this point in the season, is the third best team in the Big Twelve. Yes, I think that's fair to say. I think we'd all agree. Wait, win- so you said you said winner- if K State, w- the question was if K State wins, will they finish in the top three? And you said no. I said no because I still... He's just kind of playing the odds playing that somebody the odds. else will okay. finish with a better... Because there's still some okay. toss-up games with Baylor and Iowa State. All right. I don't want to put words Alrighty. in the mouth, but I think that means he's seeing a 5-4, 6-3 is finished and somebody yep. else. Probably a Cyclones because he loves But I them, do agree. Yeah. You know, finishes above. <laughs> finish above. But I do agree. This this Would game really does this probably decide who will be the third best team in the league. If I wanted to be Homer City, it could... I mean, if K-State wins... I would probably argue they're the second best team in the league right now because they will have won at Oklahoma State and Stillwater. Not Texas's fault they played the game in Austin, but I mean if you're just you know they only comparing thirty six thirty, right? Yeah. Do what? Yeah. They only won't beat Texas only beat Oak State thirty six thirty, right? Right, yeah, right. It's Austin, unlikely yeah. it will be I mean, I'm just saying if you wanted to argue that K State's the second best team off what's been earned on the field so far, yeah. I think you could argue it, right? If they yeah. win this game. I'd say a follow up question would be Oh, I'm not ready. (laughs) Give him one. When we're talking about this, does the loser still remain the fourth best team? Ooh, that is an interesting. No, no, because I think the winner of Baylor Iowa State would be. I I think Iowa State is going to be. That's a good question. And Oki, I mean, I guess I would say I have some ifs and whatever. Oki State can't be if they lose and they're 0 and 2 in the league, even against even against two good teams, which I think they could still be good. I can't say they're the fourth best team. If K State State were to go down there and lose 31 30. I'd probably argue that K State's still the fourth best team in the league, yeah. maybe at I'll, least I'll, at least at the time being. Yeah, I think I would go with the winner of Baylor Iowa State, but it'd be close. In a ranking, I would rank the winner of that game higher because they won a game and earned it. But if I'm just going, you know, I test, you know, all that, you know, can't you watch the games? Don't you see things? You know that that whole cliche thing. I would say K State's probably still yeah. the fourth. It's fun. Best. It's kind of a separation Saturday early in the season. It because, is because of those two games that we're talking. Because Baylor Iowa State keeps coming up, so that game's going to matter. Okay, let's get back into this game a little bit. Okay, Oklahoma State is averaging 270, almost 271 on the ground, 
and passing for 263, about as balanced as you can get. We've talked about Spencer Sanders some so far. Spencer Sanders some so far. I love it. A lot of that's S's really to get good. out right in a way. Didn't stumble over you didn't any stumble of it. At all. Will Spencer Sanders cause K State more trouble throwing the football or running the football? It's just not a yes or no. This could be just more a conversation. Yeah. Which we'll start with Dy, then just maybe go around see what you guys think. Mm-hmm. Dy, are you more scared of him on the ground or through the air? Where can he hurt K State worse? I think on the ground because if he starts to leak out a little bit on the ground, and I think we saw a little bit of that from Tommy Stevens before he had to get pulled. Uh, I think Mississippi State's first touchdown was some of the broken plays that he was able to create because he could, they kind of like Tommy Stevens, he uses his legs to throw the ball too. So I think that everything that Sanders does is kind of precipitated by what he can do with his legs on the ground. So that worries me the most. I'll go contrary to that. I think that um, I do believe quarterback running the ball, especially against K-State, It'll be really their – I'm trying to think. I mean, I guess Nichols had a guy who could really could. run the ball too, but yeah. it's just a team that didn't match up. So this will be the first test, I think, of a guy where an offense can match up and also he can throw the ball too. So I do think uh, th- the explosive plays from Sanders could come out of the pass game because of the run game too, like you said, because Stevens had some plays where – Things broke up, and he was able to find a guy late in the half to in the end zone. And I could see Sanders, I think, is an even better passer than a a Stevens. And I could see him finding some guys and burning K-State deep a few times. He's a better passer than an injured Tommy Stevens. That's that's, that's that's the one thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. If you care about the PFF numbers for Spencer Sanders, he is graded at a 65.5 in the passing game. Again, to give you some point of reference, that's not like a school grade where 65 is a D and you're failing. 65 fives probably, I would say, those slightly below average, like, you know, around average, slightly below average. It's not a disaster. Um, run game, he's a 77.4. That counts him. So, I mean, PFF would tell you he's better yep. in the run game than in the pass game. But I think either, you know, can be a big deal. Uh, Chuba Hubbard. Flando, we're going to start with you this time. <laughs> so a guy, he's kind of an old school guy in the sense that uh, they use more than one back, but he basically is their back. He was over 30 carries against Texas. Um, he's been, if not the best back in the Big 12 this year, pretty darn close. He gets an 80 from PFF. They carried running backs hard, so an 80 is a good yep. score um, for him. Is he Flanders? Is he the one? Is he the best running back in the Big 12? Mm. And two, is he a tougher challenge even than Kylan Hill? I do I don't think he is the best back in the Big 12. I think he's easily top th- two, maybe three for sure. But he's better. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm a Puka I, Williams. Yeah, I really like to say Puka. I know it's <laughs> well, Khalil I, Herbert I, probably better than Puka Williams. Yeah, well, Khalil Herbert yeah. is really good too. And then I'm a big fan of Trey Sermon and Kennedy Brooks too. I mean, but you're just playing the numbers and saying one of these five yeah, guys is better than yeah. Chuba. Yeah, <laughs> but I do think Chuba's is top three running back. I think he's. Is he, be- is he going to be scarier than Kylan Hill? I think so, because of his speed rather than Hill had more of the, the power that mm-hmm. K-State was able to, to bottle up more often than not. Um, so I think Chuba Hubbard is a scarier matchup for K-State because of that speed factor that I think is going to take a big play in this game. See, that's interesting to me, and I'm curious what you say, because I would have said Hill scares – I think Hill's a better back, so he scares me more. But it's an interesting discussion. You know, Hill um, – did rely more on that game, of course, in his, in his power and his physicality, which helped him. Or maybe maybe Chuba's going to get out and outside more. So, which one scares you more, Dy? I think Kyle and Hill scared me more, but that's also me having the knowledge of you know, mm-hmm. what he did last year. So, yep. I think that probably weighed in a little bit into it. I can obviously understand an argument for Hubbard, but the funny thing is, like Oklahoma State only scored twelve in Manhattan last year, so it, and, and Justice Hill was yeah. Still on, on the team at the time too. Baltimore but yeah, Raven, Chuba though. Hubbard probably should scare me more. But I coming this season definitely would have thought Colin Hill. I'd probably still go that way. But I do think Chuba Hubbard's the best running back in the Big. I would actually agree with that. I, part of my answer is too seeing how K State was able to do pretty well with Kylan Hill last week. And if I were to play have to play Kylan Hill one more time this season, I might still say I'm scared of that matchup ahead. I like I like the flip flop, you know. I mean, I think, no, I think it's good. I think it's good to have a conversation and say, "Ah, you know what? I see it a different way. That's just fine." They're similar. All of these again are similar backs. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw two numbers at you, and I'm gonna ask you how meaningful you think these numbers are. And I, again, not a trick question. You can say super meaningful, don't mean anything, whatever. I think they are. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> uh, K State's defense has given up first downs on 16.1 percent of third down tries. That's fantastic. 16.1 yep. percent. 
Oklahoma State's defense while giving up a similar yards per play, 5.2 to 4.9, similar in that, that, that category to K-State, is allowing nearly 50% of third downs to be converted, 49.3. I think it's the the biggest difference between these two teams, yeah. and I think it's what's going to tell who wins or loses. And again, like me and Derek talk about, you don't tr- your goal should not be to convert a lot of third downs; it's to do the things that let you convert third downs. You know and I'm saying and play good football. But is that is that the biggest gap between these two teams? Is K State finds somebody off the field, and Oklahoma State Oklahoma State's defense Derek does not. Yeah, because if it turns out that way, K State's going to win the game. You're you're exactly right because the way Oklahoma State likes to play with pace and. And just you know, play after play after play after play. You know, run, you know, no time in between. Uh, just just rapid uh, rapid fire. They can't do that if, if they're not converting third downs at a, at, a, at a really good clip. Uh, that, that's the thing with these high high paced offenses, high energy offenses. And I, and I think the, you know one of the first that we can remember that kind of played this way, at least mainstream, was Chip Kelly's teams really at Oregon. And you know, the way to beat them was you know. If you get quick three and outs, they're never on the field. Right. Um, and th- th- your defense isn't going to wear down. And uh, the problem for teams that they're not good third down defense is, is Kansas State's just the way their offense is predicated. It's almost just as important to stop them on third down. I mean, it's important to stop everyone. But if you don't, they're going to keep that ball for 10 minutes. Yep. <laughs> Same kind of thing to you. Maybe there's not much to add. But, I mean, to me, that's just so, so big. No, I'll ask it in a different way. Yeah. Um, is there a chance that through three games, you know, maybe those there's too small of a sample size? To, K State's not going to limit teams to 20 percent or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Um, so what I'm, I guess what I'm getting at is, do you think that's who those defenses are? Is K State going to be an elite third down defense and Okie State a bad third down defense? And that's who we're going to see Saturday? Or is it too early in the season for me to lose my mind about those two statistics? I think it's too early in the season. I think this is something that's going to even itself out as we go on. I still think that. Uh, because it's in Stillwater, it might lean more towards Oak State's favor, and we could see more of a shootout uh, in case they having to keep up with Oklahoma State rather than Oklahoma State, you know, having to, you know, just s- stay on par with K State's slow offense. I think Oklahoma State's third down defense has a chance to kind of improve upon yeah. their numbers, probably, yeah. probably after Kansas State, because their defense has been assembled to stop the fast spread offenses right. in the Big 12. So that you do have to have concern if you're Oklahoma State because it's still not yeah. built to defend the power run. You walked me into that question, which was great. I wasn't going to ask it before. Similar to yes, no, you have to say to me, Kansas State or Oklahoma State? You can't add any thoughts. I'll ask them if I want them, Flanders. Yes, <laughs> do it. <laughs> I like that. You said that so respectfully. All right. These two teams are not, like we've kind of talked about, are not built for each other. You know what I mean? K-State's uh, – uh, that's not totally fair because K-State's defense is going to defend a lot of spread offenses, but uh-huh. as they're currently constructed, right, you know, they feel like they're not built for each other. Who has a bigger advantage in this mismatch on both sides? Kansas State, we're going to run the ball against this team and blah, 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 or Oklahoma State being a, a really efficient spread team against a K-State defense that hadn't seen it yet. Who has the advantage in that? Kansas State. I'd say Kansas State as well, yeah. Uh, I did not expect to answer this question. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Uh, you could just say K State like the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I would say Kansas State too. So no one had any argument there. So that's a terrible question. I mean, I mean, yeah. I think both teams could see some benefit of you know doing things that the team hasn't really experienced yet, at least on the field. Yeah. But I think we all kind of lean in thinking that K State's probably better off going against a three-man front, you know, built to defend the spread, uh, blah blah blah. Then 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 vice versa, mm-hmm. Oklahoma State going against the defense. So while they haven't seen an offense like Oklahoma State's, they know they're going to defend it all the time. Yep. Yeah. For me, it's not even close, and maybe I'm it's just probably, probably, not. probably yeah. and I might be overreacting, over exaggerating, but I think this is also why Bill Snyder teams were able to just pound the ball and, they did. and have success against Oklahoma State. They beat them was two years ago, or is it three now? At least two. I mean, they won 17. there in 17. They won Manhattan in 18. 16, they would have played them in Manhattan, and I don't remember that game. Mm-hmm. Oh, was that a loss? Was that a frustrating loss? Where I think it was. 15? Uh, 16. 16. I think it was a frustrating loss. No, six. That was. That yeah. was absolutely was. was. it the game like, when uh, he said like a fourth and two at like Okie State's 40 and didn't go for yep. it and then gave it back and Oklahoma State scored on the next play? Or was that, no, or was 16 in the Cody Whoa. Cook quarterback game? I got it. I'm just pulling up Kansas State, Oklahoma State. Was that when Tyreek Hill was on the team? I know they lost at Stillwater when Tyreek Hill was on the they, team. They lost at Stillwater the game. That, yeah, and I think, I think, I think so. Kansas State, Oklahoma State. Kansas State lost 43 to 37. 
So that, that would was, be the yeah, that would be somewhat similar to the 15 TCU game where K State mm-hmm. was just dominating and then threw it away in the second half. So anyway, the point is they've won two straight. One, but even that straight. game, I mean, they ruled up. That, yeah. They ran wild at Oklahoma State's defense because for three, four, five years now, that's been the case. Yeah. In this defense Oklahoma against that State offense. just gets gashed by every team that wants to, to play the power run. So I don't think that's going to be a change. If if this game is close, and it'll probably be close, but. There, there's not going to be a shortage of points or at least offensive efficiency in this game because Oklahoma State's going to get – I've just – we've never seen them prove that they can stop the power run with their scheme. You guys ever look at this site? It's uh, win, Winsopedia. It's really cool. If anyone's oh, listening, yeah, you can just put up you put up any two teams. It'll show you their oh, history. Cool. It'll show their history. A lot, of, a lot of colorful graphics to show you when teams have dominated the series. You know, it's a lot of orange in here until about, oh, you know, 1990-ish. I don't know what changed there. Uh, but it's just interesting. It's a really good site to go look at compare two teams. But what were you going to say about D.Y. I was going to ask – well, I was just going to ask a question like, this is the first year Gundy is seeing a climb and run team. And obviously Gundy got on the phone and said uh, it looks like the same – as we've seen in the past with K-State. But do you think that's a big advantage for K-State going in, knowing I mean, Gundy hasn't, hasn't think, actually seen this on the field yet? that's kind of the more – you asked it better than I did, um, 100% better than I did, because I, I think I was thinking more in my head. You got two staffs yeah. who, in a general sense, know nothing about each yeah. other. I mean, they've never, they've never, in my knowledge, coached against each other. But, yeah, it's um, just a never, different right, way to never question. That's right, true, right? right? So – I guess, you know, that's what I'm trying to get at is, is who has the advantage? Is it the K-State staff, Yeah, you know, or uh, who has seen offenses like this but never played Oklahoma State? Yep. Or is it the Oklahoma State staff, you know, who's played K-State a million times but never played k It's probably just half yeah. a dozen, yeah, one, six, and the other, that kind yeah. of thing. But somebody's going to get an edge from this, and I'm trying to figure out who it is. Yeah, yeah my, my guess would still be Kansas State because, you know, Gundy and his team have played it a bunch of times they've never defended it well still up to this uh-huh. yeah. up to this point and this one's even probably more extreme yeah so. and there's still years and years of tendencies of what Oklahoma State likes to do with Mike Gundy as head uh-huh. coach in a big 12 game where Absolutely. there's three games of tendency for K-State and Chris Kleiman uh I, I asked this next question you have to take some courage maybe on this one if you say yes or no maybe to say no so you don't have to you know defend <laughs> it um I'm a big Mike Gundy fan like sincerely too. if he was sitting here right now I wouldn't have the courage to say this what I'm about to say because I really like him. I think he's a very good coach, a good guy, been very successful. Um, but I can't shake the feeling that Mike Gundy just doesn't quite care as much as he used to. <laughs> like when you watch his demeanor and press conferences or on the sideline or that kind of stuff, he said in the Big 12 media days he admitted and took a lot of ownership for not caring enough last year and letting stuff go and letting stuff slide, and that was their problem. Mm-hmm. What I'm asking is he's still the same guy. I get the sense that he's still the same guy, and he's probably still letting things slide right now. D.Y.? Uh, I tend to think so. I mean, a, a bold take would, would be, you know, is Mike Gundy coaching Oklahoma State next year? I mean, right. I don't think it's a slam dunk. Um, he's more volatile than ever. Right. Uh, which he's always been pretty volatile. And and not to – and this isn't speaking ill of the dead at all, but, but he had a really good relationship Correct. with Correct. You're speaking positively. Yeah, yeah. He had a really good relationship with T. Boone Pickens. Uh, T. Boone, T. Boone Pickens and Mike Gundy have kind of defined, redefined Oklahoma State no football. No doubt. And with the absence of him, Mike Gundy probably has even less reason to, what you say, care? Yeah, yeah. I think it goes to show, you look at a, a team last year where, I mean, I know I keep saying it and I dog on Taylor Cornelius all the time. You sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Matt <laughs> loved him. Oh, well, he was terrible. But, but, but yeah, like he had that team and he didn't seem to care that much. And now he's got a talented team and it still kind of comes off to me like he doesn't care enough. To where, yeah, I think either him or Oklahoma State at the end of the year are going to think, well, if we had a coach that actually cared about these playmakers right now, we could be even more special than we are with Gundy. So yeah. why not get a guy that actually cares and keeps getting playmakers yeah, in here? exactly. I think it's one of those scenarios, and I've said this on the show before, or like just in our conversation, like you have to be uniquely unhealthy obsessed with winning football games at your university to be able to do it. I think Chris yep. Kleiman is. Yep. Now, Chris Kleiman comes off as very measured. I think he's a very genuine guy, but I – I think Gundy I no used doubt, to be. And He's that, a burning fire. Right. I have no doubt deep down that Chris Kleiman, more than yep. anything in the world, wants to win football games. I don't know if Mike Gundy's like that at nope. Oklahoma State anymore. And I'm not even knocking him for it. It's hard. I mean, to go to that job and to pour your heart into it that hard all the time, I think he was that guy. And like uh-huh. Derek said, I want to respect the heck out of Mike Gundy because I think he did 
rebuild that program. At Oklahoma yep. State, they were trash before him. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know Les Miles had a couple of good years, but their history for the 30 years before him was really bad. So I'm not here to knock Mike Gundy. He got really quiet in here. That's not my point. <laughs> but, yeah, I just I get the sense, too, like he's clearly not real close with the AD. He admitted he wouldn't care as much as last year as he should. And I, we're not trying to make light of a death either. It's, it's sad, but that was a close person yep. to him. So, yeah, I just wonder, is he invested enough to beat – I guess what I'm getting at, is he invested enough to beat a coach – who I think is as invested as you can possibly be in Chris Kleiman. Yeah, that's a good question. And a, another observation I made um, after that teleconference, and it's pretty analytical on my part, but I think it's a leap that you can make and probably make fairly easy. Is you know, I mean, we all have talked about how Mike Gundy entered that teleconference, and he had a dust-up with the reporter on there. But just in general, he seemed pretty from the start agitated, pretty upset. And you got to wonder, maybe he, for some reason, he, even at Monday, two days after, just hadn't shook off that loss right. against Texas. And if he hadn't, and it's human nature not to be yeah, able to. No but, doubt. But that doesn't really speak well to the locker room, if that's the case. If you are outwardly pouring it the way he was. And that's what I'm kind of getting at. I think a lot of these things I'm kind of passively or directly criticizing him for are human nature. Yeah. And are very regular things. And I could get a person in his position you know, doing these things. I'm just really hanging on to, I loved his accountability about admitting that yep. he let stuff go. We've all done that. I mean, I've done that yep. as a boss at Target and Dixon mm-hmm. here, <laughs> where at some point I'm like, ah, I'm tired of this issue. I'm just going to let it go. Yep. I'm tired. I'm just going to well, let K-State it go. wasn't that good last year right. and they blew him out and beat the tar out of them. Say yep. they go on the road and blow him out at Stillwater. Do we assume anything change? Right. I mean, I mean, I think, it, I think it needs to down yeah. there probably at some point. And I don't think Mike Gundy can't be a successful coach still. I just don't know that I, he is. Didn't they yeah. beat Texas last year? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they've so right losing them is kind right. of a step back. Right, they'd won at Austin five straight years and then lost to them. Yeah, and that's that not a bad true. thing. But yeah, I mean, that like Texas team really hasn't changed. No, no. I mean, I just think I, I think Oklahoma State's good. I think K State's gonna have a real test, it's and I think there's a great chance we'll come back in this pod next Tuesday and I'll say, well, I'm stupid. They were really talented and they they played well. I just think there's a chance that Okie State's trending downwards and it's not going to just turn around. I thought that entering the season, I'll say this, if if Kansas State does go into Stillwater and does beat Oklahoma State, they start out 0-2 in Big 12 play. I wonder if the wheels don't start to completely fall off at that point. I, I, I don't know if I'm ready to go that far yeah. yet just because of the talent just they have on with the us. field. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? But but for me, that's the thing. Is Gundy still actually getting recruits in there? That's not really right. dipped yet. But it is seems not to be good on for field. Mike Holder. <laughs> it does seem Holder, to be you know on Holden, field. Holder, yeah. He's just not as he's just not as intent like you've been saying. I, I think if you're a Kansas State fan, one of the programs you'd love to see take a dip is Oklahoma State. I mean, Derek yeah. knows better than anybody. I mean, if you're going to list off the five schools K State recruits against the most, they're probably in that group, right? I mean, yeah. KU, Oklahoma State. Minnesota, Texas Tech, you Iowa know, State. like Iowa State. Probably like, not. The funny thing, I think they maybe probably not Texas have Tech. less recruiting yeah. battles with Tech now. And, and man, it, I'd have to go look, but I'm not sure if it's a little less with Oklahoma State. Even. It has slept a little bit. Now you're seeing a little bit more Iowa State, Minnesota, you know, those kind of things. But anyway, point is, is if Okie State were slipping, like I'm suggesting maybe they are, that'd it's be a good, good opportunity thing. for mm-hmm. K-State, I think. I think it's one of their – we talk about peer programs all the time, you know, and I think Okie State, if you're being real – is kind of a peer program yep. to K-State, and that's one of those schools you'd like to not be good. It's hard. I guess I'm saying this. It's hard for both those to be really good at the same time. They can be, and they have a number of times in the last 10 years, but it's hard for both those schools to be good at the same time if Oklahoma and Texas are good at the same yep. time. Too. And the, other, the only two I remember them climbing with were Corey Black and Trent Pohl, and Oklahoma State won both of those battles, and I think some of that had to do with you know the newness of Chris Kleiman being a head coach at that point. But the, the – what I'm trying to say is the fact that there was only two battles, I don't know if that really speaks to what Kansas State's doing. That might speak to maybe Oklahoma State is slipping if there is only two battles that I can really think of between the two coaches. We've talked a lot about a lot of things relating to K-State, Oklahoma State. I think it's time to go around. We'll make our predictions. So as you go, go ahead and tell me your score. And kind of just tell me why. You know, not necessarily – if you want to go player of the game, that's a great way to do it. If you want to say it's because Skylar's thrown for four hundo and they're going to win, that's fine. <laughs> but I kind of just want to hear your score, how you think it's going to go, and then we'll wrap this up by taking time to talk through our Big Ten – Big Ten. Big Ooh, 12 hey, DY, yeah, yeah, right? That too. <laughs> <laughs> our Big 12 power rankings. Um, one, to kind of go on record with it, and then two, so we can come back next week and say, oh, man, you had so-and-so here. What are you thinking, Flando? You're dumb. So, but let's start with the scores. Uh, I'll start with Derek. We'll go Derek, Flando – myself and then we'll let logan finish this up um scoring what's gonna happen man 
I'll take Kansas State, and I can't, and I wouldn't have imagined doing that before the year. But I, Hater. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's. Going, oh, here, now it comes around. I think it is going that way. I have it like thirty-four, thirty, or along those lines. And for me, I think that Kansas State's going to be able to do whatever they want to do on offense. To be honest, and now thirty-four points are like, well, that's not a whole lot of. But Kansas State's only average like nine or ten offensive possessions right. a year. Thirty-four points—that's a lot. Giving that scoring like every possession, basically. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's scoring almost every possession. And I think they're going to be able to do that. Now, the, the caveat here is if Kansas State's offense decides to turn the ball over for the first time they have all year, or they continue to be able continue to muff punts, and that's probably it's probably going to take a cleaner game than that. So uh, it's going to be cleaner than that. But I I just think that they can limit Oklahoma State's big plays enough and just. You know, be efficient enough on offense because I just don't think a whole lot of Oklahoma State's defense when it comes to stopping Kansas State. Yeah, I, I'm going similar lines as you, uh, 31-30. So yeah, the same score for Oklahoma State, but K State wins a close one in Stillwater. Uh, I think, I mean, similar What'd thoughts. You say? 31-30. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Is that what you were going with? <laughs> Very close to that. <laughs> but but just, yeah. just roll with it. We're all in the same kind of wavelength. So uh, I think, yeah, K State. I think, I think does well on the ground. I think. Gilbert does get going on the ground. Um, I do believe there's enough passing game to, from Skyler to for them to have to respect the pass, and then it opens up holes for Gilbert because, like you said earlier, they could stack the box if they are good enough at uh, covering the receivers. But I, I just have a feeling either Malik Knowles, a tight end, or Jordan Brown has a day through the air to where uh, K-State gets it going on the ground and Gilbert has a great day. I'm just very similar to you guys. I, I think I've said 31-28 when I was able to speak on the Boscos and then on this podcast, so I'll stick with that. But I will be, admit I'm being kind of kind of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of playing the middle with that because my gut actually tells me one of the teams might win by a couple of touchdowns, and either K-State's yeah. going to be so efficient on offense and continue to be you know just timely on defense that they might run away with it, or we'll see an Oklahoma State team that can make big plays in K-State's due to turn over a couple times. So I actually don't think it's going to be a three-point game, but I'm going to split the difference and take K-State by three. Yeah, and a lot of it I think it's starting to come down to it. It's because we're getting to know more and, and have more of a sample size in, in covering this team. But you can tell that all of us are really starting to just trust yep. and believe this mm-hmm. coaching staff almost has an edge about them, even when they're facing seasoned coaches, that they're – probably just better coaches and the, the you know the stuff in North Dakota State wasn't a flu. They just know what they're doing. They're they are going to be able to be out scheme and out coach. We talked about Mike Gundy kinda losing uh, losing that edge or whatever, maybe on the on the downward side. You combine that with Kansas State having a bye week, and right. it could be a recipe for what you're talking about. Somebody who's always believed would be Logan because, of course, <laughs> he's undefeated on picks this year. He picked the Cats to win Mississippi State and reminded me on Twitter right away about I'm it. Bunch. Actually kind of made my trip. So, Logan, you've always believed. But what's going to be the score and what's going to happen Saturday in Stillwater? So, I'm going to pick them until I see maybe <laughs> the wheels kind of fall off. They've always been the most prepared team on both sides of the ball, right. except maybe special teams. So, until the wheels kind of fall off, I'm going to pick K-State uh, 24-20. Ooh. And then I think but I think K-State will be in trouble if Skyler has to throw the ball maybe over 15 times. I think they're really going to have to run. And, we only uh, threw it 18 in Starkville, so it's not a crazy number. Yeah, yeah. I, That's a good point. And I, and I, Because I was thinking, I was like, man, I wouldn't be surprised. K-State just runs like 55 times and throws <laughs> it like 12 times. Right. I mean, I think they would probably like to. So, let's move on to the Big 12 Power Rankings. I'm going to yeah. give you guys – some time to put them together on your phones. But before we do, and I'll let Derek decide because you have you already prepared yours? Yeah. Kind of? Okay. So, Derek, you get to make the choice, and then we'll all work off it. Do you want us to rank them 1 through 10 based off of, hey, they've accomplished this much so far, so right now I'm saying this team's number one. I don't think they're the best necessarily, but I think they're the best. Or do you want us to do the, I think, 1 through 10, these are the best 10 teams? in the Because in the, they're two different things. Which one do you like? I think – more of the second, just who you think is better, one through ten. Got it. I, I, I mean, you weigh a little bit. Sure, both happened. will come. But I'm asking yeah. what you're going to lean to because it might change mine a little bit. So, lean second. Yeah. So for clarity, guys, as we talk through this, we'll, I have an idea how we're going to do it. We're going to – you're saying – you're not saying – let me give an example. If you think Texas – if you think Oklahoma State's better than K-State, just put them higher than K-State. I don't care that they're 0-1 in the league and K-State hadn't played. Rank who's higher. Now, of course, your opinion should be influenced by what they've done so far, but I'm not going to just destroy you for putting a team higher than somebody with a loss, if that makes sense. So let's start at the top, and then we can just see if we go around and disagree, and if you need the teams in front of you, 
Uh, I think Oklahoma is the best team in the league. Derek? Yes. Yes. I think you can make a case for Texas. Okay, after. let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> they got the best Big 12 win thus far. I mean, they no may, doubt. They may not be the better team. Right. But they got the best mm-hmm. Big 12 win, and I they agree. are the second best team probably in the Big 12. If you were basing it just off what's happened in conference play, I would agree. You yeah. know, Texas would be better, but they got a loss. Not there. I mean, LSU's a good team. You know, I don't, yeah. think it's, I don't think it's crazy to still have a belief Texas is the best team, but I would say Oklahoma. It's still. not crazy because yeah, I think LSU is the best team in America right now. Ooh, they, Joe B is red hot right he now. He is. I, I'm a big Joe B so fan we've now. So. Three and a half ish Oklahomas, and then a guy who's like, oh, probably Oklahoma, but Texas could be, you know. Yeah. So if you, we all have Oklahoma one, do we all have Texas two, or do you have somebody else two in there? DY, Texas? Texas. Texas. Would you have Oklahoma, Texas in your top two? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now it gets tough, right? I mean, we're getting, we're, mm-hmm. we're past the top two. So not who deserves to be number three, who is the third best team in the Big 12 Conference. I'll go first. I mean, I picked K-State to win in Stillwater, so it's K-State. I have K-State as the third best team right now. Yeah, I'm kind of contradictory. I picked K-State to win in Stillwater as well. But I have Oklahoma State number three. Three through six is going to be really close. I mean, they're favored to win this game, so there's other people who think Oklahoma State's better than K-State, so you're not, you're not, you're not. I mean, you're dumb, but you're not. (laughs) So, yeah. K-State. Um. Like you said, I'll go contradictory and say um, Oklahoma State, they played tough uh, on the road at Texas, yep. and I think this Saturday we'll decide it like we talked about. We're all similar. Would anybody then who didn't – would we all have K-State, Oki State 3 and 4? Are you sticking anybody else in there? No, I have K-State 4. Uh, uh, Oak State 4. Yeah. yeah. State four. So I'm the same. I have Oklahoma State four. So one through four. There's some disagreement here. There's some, but we're we're still very very similar. Now number five. Here's where I think it gets hard for me. Like I look at my screen. I had Baylor, but that was based only off of like what they've accomplished. I don't think Baylor's the fifth best team in the Big Twelve. So now I have to think. I think I think the fifth best team in the Big Twelve is Iowa State. Is my opinion. Derek, I have Baylor. Derek has Baylor. Who do you think? Iowa the, State. Who, okay. Iowa State. So you are the only person who has Baylor as you think they're better than Iowa State. Mm -hmm. Uh, Talk us through that, D.Y. Why Mm -hmm. is that? Because I don't think Iowa State is who I thought they were before the season because uh, they've yet to really show it. I think the most they really showed was against Louisiana Monroe. but In the second half, yeah. Yeah, but man, they they should have lost Northern Iowa. Correct. And even that Monroe game, they won 72-20. I'm not trying to talk like a dumb guy telling you that they didn't dominate that game. They won 72-20. to freaking 20. They dominated. But if you watch that game, it was 24-13 with two minutes left in the first half. And uh, Monroe had two turnovers that put the ball inside the 20. They got nothing off of. Credit to Iowa State's defense. They made those plays and stopped it. I'm just saying it's, it's, if a 72-20 score can be deceptive, it was a deceptive 72-20 score. Yeah, and, I, and we don't really know a whole lot about Baylor, so I know I'm kind of rolling the dice them on f- number five, but they, they did what they had to do the first two games. They couldn't do more than what they did. Right. Now, last week against Rice, that doesn't look great. But they dominated one half of football and then laid an egg in the other. Right. Probably not unlike what Texas did at K-State last year is how I kind of described it. Right. So we're all, you know, I guess the question then becomes, similar to the last ones, the three guys who had Iowa State next, you, me, and Logan. Yep. Do we all have Baylor next? I do. I do. Or do yep. we go somewhere else? I go Baylor. Yeah, we all go I Baylor. So we're all smart. Do you go – then? so flipping the script to you, do you go Iowa State next or are you sneaking somebody else in? Are we having our first two-spot difference here? I considered sneaking someone else in, but I think the last four teams are pretty rough right yeah. now, so I have Iowa State six. Okay, so we're – no big arguments yet. I'm hoping to get a couple that are at least two off so we can say, yeah. man, what are you thinking? I think if TCU got by SMU, no doubt. You, you could probably make it. No case. doubt. That, that yeah. pr- that's a good – they look – but what's concerning for TCU is the defense <laughs> got shredded. Yeah, so now we got to get too. to number seven. I mean, the teams left we've got are West Virginia, TCU, Texas Tech, and Kansas. And again, the question is not who's achieved more. It's like, who do you think the best team out of those four teams? I'm just going to throw it out there. I say TCU. I, I said TCU. Texas Tech, it would be the, the answer if Alan Bowman was healthy. Right. So we both said TCU at number seven. What do you got? I'm going Texas Tech here. I uh-huh. I just think, yeah, losing that losing at home yeah. to SMU it just doesn't it's look great good. to me. So good. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> silly guy. To, to, that was a ref, was an inside joke. So you've got, you said uh, Texas, Texas Tech. Texas Tech. Yep. You've got TCU, TCU, Texas Tech. What do you got? Uh, Texas Tech, uh, like you said, that if their quarterback was healthy. Alan Bowman, yeah. Yeah. But. 
So again, not that different. We're all TCU Texas yeah. Tech. So let's flip the script. Us Texas or TCU guys. Now wait a minute. Maybe we could have some disagreement here because now we're to number eight. Yeah. I might put West Virginia. Might or are you? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. I will. I'm going to put West Virginia also ahead of Texas Tech because West Virginia has now, you know, has now beaten NC State. They've now won at Kansas. They don't have an injured quarterback. I think West Virginia is better than Texas Tech, and they're my numbers. They're my number. We have seven. Eight. 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 My number eight. Eight nine is real close. Who do you got? Actually, nine and ten. Now, do, do you I'm get do you get, Tech? No, oh, you like these guys. But I understand guys. the West Virginia pick. <laughs> okay, so he's still not different than you. So now you guys. Should TCU either eight? be putting TCU eight or sliding somebody ahead of TCU. What are you doing? TCU planners? eight. Okay. Boring. TCU eight. <laughs> uh, so the only the only controversy at all is me sliding West Virginia up to number number seven in this thing or eight. Eh, it's crazy. So now we're on number nine, which is where I have Texas Tech, who is your guys' is number seven. Who do you got at number nine? You've only got left what? West Virginia and Kansas. Yeah, yeah. West Virginia beat Kansas. So, so that's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, that was easy. West Virginia. Easy. All right, West Virginia <laughs> and all around sucks Kansas again. at ten. I so. tell you what, because Kansas smacked Boston College, and I'm not just doing this to be different. Because they smacked Boston College, because they play close with West Virginia, Kansas is going to be in some more ball games this year. I think so too. I think sure. if Kansas had beaten West Virginia. Uh, you know, I don't know. They'd have been up high. I'm, 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 I'm at nine. I'm at like nine up there at nine or something. Okay, let me, let me explain myself there. Now, what I just said was if this team had won this game, they'd be higher in the rankings, which is pretty good analysis. What? what away the Coastal Carolina. Right, right. What happened to me, though, is I'm reading uh, – I'm reading uh, ESPN because I wanted to go pull up the games to, like, say, okay, let's pick the games this uh-huh, week and now yeah. we have a Big 12 rankings. It says, Iowa, Iowa State in jeopardy over band incident. I haven't read that. That just what? got my attention. Um, oh, yeah. I've have you read this? It. I've read uh, it. The Iowa band got Quote, I'm not convinced at all that we should play this game again here or there or anywhere unless we can pick our fans, our band, and, of course, our athletes. And that was Iowa President Bruce Harold told the paper on Monday. Expect... Oh, adding that he expected to be able to work through this. Well, what a terrible headline. Yeah. The guy said we're going to figure it out. And, and the funny thing is, is but the headline says kinda, in jeopardy. Yeah, they Come kinda, on, well, it's, in, it's also not in jeopardy because they have a five-year contract, five years left what, still on their contract. What's the deal with that headline? But the, the headline should say Iowa president upset at band treatment. Yeah, band, band members. <laughs> are, that's what it is. The last three times the two teams have played, band members have gotten injured. Because of fan violence. I mean, that's not good. I'm not. We're not joking about that. I'm saying that. Come on. That's bad. Headline. It's not a good headline. Yeah, no, that's bad. Because I you mean, still have a contract. Is one school going to buy out the other? I mean, come on. You should get rid of those fans. <laughs> no doubt about it. But, no doubt. Yeah. But but get rid of those fans. <laughs> Ban them. I mean, I think anybody I mean, who beats on anybody for all you should be in some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's pick the Big Twelve games. Let's pick the top twenty-five and let's wrap up this edition of the KSO Show, which is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We're recording from the Tallgrass Tap House. We have saved our meal for after the pod. Which I'm very excited about. We made the right choice not to eat before. Yep, because yep, I'm hungry. I would now. say. <laughs> so we've already picked K State, Oklahoma State, uh, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, Texas, the team that we had towards the bottom, Oklahoma, everyone has at the top. So I'm just going to say, I'll ask it a different way because we all think Oklahoma's going to win. Uh, Lions 27. Do yeah, you think Oklahoma covered 27 point line against Texas Tech, DY? That's, that's a fat line, I will say, Ooh. especially for a conference game. Oklahoma has been covering every game so far almost. So this one might be one they don't. I bet they cover. <laughs> you like it? It's funny because I think Tech is better than you guys do, don't I? Or maybe you I'm do, but around. I think, you know, I mean, Bowman being out. And yeah, kind of no, stuff, I mean, I, yeah, I think Oklahoma yeah. covers this. Yeah. That's a lot of points. Do, do not cover. It's a lot. I don't, yeah, 27 is just a lot. I'd probably say no, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if they do. Uh, we have Kansas, who we all have 10th in the league against TCU. We have the bottom half team. TCU is at home, a 15 and a half point favorite. Not where the line is much. But I'll ask it this way. Who wins, and is this game close when the fourth quarter starts, D.Y.? I say frogs, and I say it will be close. If Kansas has had any luck against anyone in the Big 12, it's been oh, against Garrett Patterson. They, they have beat had him twice. His number. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> had his number, Flando. Who wins? Is this close in the fourth quarter? Ah, oh, man. It's close. I, I think it's close in the fourth quarter, but TCU does win. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, even them going to Boston College and having that yeah. big win makes me think that they could – pull it off against one of these lower level teams but TCU at home I'll take if they're going to win a big 12 game this is one of the two or three you'd probably be looking at for them yep Um, because of the history because what TCU did last week blah 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 um, but losing I'll, to West Virginia answer, doesn't help. No, I'll thing. answer before <laughs> Logan. I think TC wins, and I do think it is close in the fourth quarter. But I think TC wins. Logan, and who's your winner? And we have a we have a competitive football match here. He's going to pick the um, Hawks. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. 
I think KU plays better on the road. I'll go at KU. That's a lot Ooh. of points. 15 points. It's too many, I, maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, for a team that just lost to TCU. I mean, TCU had, or SMU had a good quarterback. Right. Shane but, Michelle? Yeah, I'm going to go KU with the upset. They always find a way to Like win winning this. it straight I up? Do. How about that? I think that's a good gamble. I mean, if you're going to gamble, I think it's a good one. Uh, we have... Like DY said earlier, you're a bit of a separation Saturday. You know, in the Big 12, Oklahoma State, K-State kind of separate themselves against each other. Iowa State, Baylor, two teams that we all had, you know, virtually neck and neck, five and six in the league right now. Iowa State goes to Baylor. The Cyclones are a two-and-a-half point favorite in Waco. I just want the winner. Who's winning Baylor, Iowa State this Saturday in Waco, DY? Man, I haven't even thought about it. but It's my, a tough my, one, my too. Guts, my gut says Baylor because they're playing better football right now. Iowa State, I think they've – they're about to catch a stride and play some really good Big 12 football. So far, it makes sense because you picked Iowa State to finish higher than. I mean, you projected being yep. better. He projected yep. Baylor. So you guys are uh, you guys are in, you guys are on brand yeah. right now. You know, I'm I mean, off the again, Iowa I'm State going team. against my uh, Big 12 rankings. Your rankings are great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go Baylor in this one. But they're at home. You can argue yeah. that that's yeah, the difference. No doubt. Yeah, I. I said Iowa State was the better team. So this is tough for me because I said Iowa State was the better team. Baylor is the home team. I don't think anything's provided at Waco as far as a home field advantage, so that doesn't help me. I will take Iowa State to win at Baylor. Uh, that's the toughest game we picked in a while. I think yeah, I, I, I'll take Iowa State really to tough. win at Baylor, but man, that's a tough one. I'm just down on Iowa State right now. I'm excited. I am to too. See them come I am back. too. I think they're gonna come back strong. I think me, Purdy's too good. Let me run through the top 25. <laughs> I don't want to pick every game necessarily. Just if there's, <laughs> just if there's interesting. Ooh, How about, quarterback. Let's start. Uh, Charlie Brewer. Charlie we all Lord think he's, he's very mad. Um, <laughs> number 12, Penn State goes on the road to face Maryland. The Nittany Lions are undefeated. Maryland's two and one. I just want to get D. Wise pick on this. Not Maryland. that I don't care about you guys, but I want to see if he's a Terp talk guy. Terp, Terp, Terps. All right, okay, okay. Because that's, that's a trap game for Penn State. How about this Pac-12 matchup? That's somewhat exciting. Arizona State, Flanders. I want you to pick this one because I feel like you've watched. Because I, I feel like you've watched Herm. the Sun Devils this year. Uh, I'm referencing <laughs> that. Yeah, there we go. Darn um, at number 15, Cal. You, Cal number 15, four and zero. Got wins already. We talked about who over Washington and over Ole Miss. How about Fear the Fork and Cal? No, I mean, give me Herm in this one. I mean, he's just gonna go you around and beat some guys. I I just don't think the Pac-12 go around and beat some guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, beat I think some, Cal at home. Beat some teams. Are, I don't think the Pac-12 is good this year They're at all. Not, but that's a 9:30 game. No <laughs> one's gonna watch that. Versus no Pac-12. one's watching that. I know, but I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the team that is the t- team that's not ranked 15th in the nation because they do not deserve 15th in the oh, nation. Oh, okay. Was, you said the Pac-12 is not good. I'm like, they're both Pac-12 teams. I'm not sure that matters. <laughs> the interconference. Yeah, but Herm, Herm went in there, and I know they both have good wins. Uh, You're Arizona more impressed State has by the Michigan Arizona State, State win at Michigan State yes, than you are Ole Miss, Ole Miss or yes. even Washington. Washington. Yeah, I know that's that's extent. yeah, I know yeah. that's surprising too. But I, yeah, I and the Washington's. combination of both of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think Cal, um, Cal big. Hey guys, how about Virginia, uh, ranked number eighteen at four and zero, heading to South Bend to take on the Fighting Irish, who lost to Georgia. I actually have no idea what happened in that game. I watched like two seconds of it. I didn't know who won. Notre, I mean, Notre until Dame until now, basically. Notre Dame played good. Either. Notre Dame played good against Georgia. I, I think, knew they were competitive. I saw I think, they're thirteen point favorite. In this yeah, game. and they came so close to being Georgia. I think that probably got them a little hungrier for the rest of the season, knowing that they could go finally go toe to toe with a team like that without getting blown out. I think they blow the doors off Virginia, and the ACC gets more exposed than they already are. I think you're probably right, but I'm going to be bold and take the Virginia Cavaliers here. Before you pick that out, <laughs> before you pick that out, I was going to make a rule that you could only pick Virginia if you could name one player on their team. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm taking the Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Bryce Perkins, say. quarterback. Yeah, I refuse. To I, say have, I have it in front of me, so <laughs> I refuse to say Virginia is a football school. <laughs> so that's true. They're yeah. a basketball school now. I yeah, I don't. That think ever Virginia will ever be good. Well, Ron Prince was their OC, you know, at one point. They got that. Pa- they got You're that pack line defense. I take the Irish too. I like the courageousness from you. I didn't know Virginia player either. I just thought it'd be funny to see if you did. We do have a top 25 matchup in the Conference of Champions, as Grant Flander believes, the Pac-12. We have number 21, USC, hitting the road at 3-1, 2-0 in the Pac-12 to take on Washington at number 17, 3-1, 0-1 with that loss to a powerhouse Cal team. D.Y., does Washington keep the Pac-12's hopes of somebody being relevant beyond Cal alive, or do they fall to USC here? I, well, I guess they could be yeah, relevant. They, they, you I'm, know? I'm actually going to say USC wins this on the road, although 
the funny thing is, it doesn't. Apparently, it doesn't matter who USC plays a quarterback. They play. They've started three different quarterbacks this year, and no one has started two straight games yet. But I think they win in Washington. I don't like Huskies. I'm not a big fan of the Huskies either, as I stated earlier. But <laughs> not a big fan of USC either. No, no one in the Pac-12. Because I mean, USC <laughs> you lost to winner. BYU, right? Uh, in non-conference? Yeah. yeah in give B- me. Did they win that? Uh, I don't know. They have did one they loss. Let's look up. Oh, look up the Trojans. BYU. Oh, yeah. yeah, they lost to BYU because they beat Utah and Stanford. Yes. Though. Which is very, yeah, that's nice. Utah, but I, I Utah think, beats Fresno, excuse me, USC beat Fresno State 31 23, Stanford 45 20. They lost to BYU, as you said, 30 to 27. Then they beat Utah 30 to 23, which proves that a new football transfer scores mean nothing because we listed that Utah <laughs> just beat the tar out of BYU know. and it didn't mean anything yep. in those two games. Yep. So if, if this was playing, played at USC, I'd go USC, but yeah, look, give, me, give me the home team here. I don't know much about these two teams, but I'll stick with the hot hand, USC. They uh, lost last week. <laughs> no, they won last oh, week. They won last Utah. week. They're red hot. Yeah, yeah. they beat Utah. That's a hot week. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. That's I thought they won you game outside. They're red hot. <laughs> uh, I will stick with the home team like Flando, even though I don't think Washington's very good. I think Chris Peterson is a good coach, but I think he's kind of showing he's not. Like, There's only a few elite coaches out there. It's not a huge knock on the guy to say he can't win a national championship at Washington, but I think they're kind of a top 25 type team, and that's about what they are. Has Washington been losing before we move on from the Pac-12? Has Washington, wa- Washington State yes, been losing? They, they, were, they were up 63 up Seven or something in against UCLA quarter. in the third quarter and lost. Wow! Told you, told wow. you, Chip that's, Brown was yeah, keeping, yeah. It, keeping it to get. No. Yeah, Chip, yeah, Kelly. Gonna have to. Chip <laughs> Kelly, Chip <laughs> Brown, Chip, Chip UCLA uh, won sixty-seven Dale. to sixty-three. Chip. Pac-12 this year is just, <laughs> just anyway. terrible. Anyway, what were you, what game of the game of the week just for Uh-oh, Flanders to pick. Big Ten matchup. Michigan Indiana State. heads to a Michigan State team who's on quite a roll off last <laughs> week's win. Uh, they're ranked. The Spartans are, of course, at twenty-five. They probably just roll over the over the Hoosiers. Has Indiana lost? They have lost year? one game. I think it was to Ohio, Ohio State. State. Then I mean, yeah, I'm going to take Spartans at home. If this was in in, in at Indiana, I'd be a little different just because I think Indiana is better than they have been in the past. And how many uh, points yeah. can Michigan State score? That's always Ugh. they're like Northwestern right yeah. now. Yeah, Lewerke. Until Lewerke's not the quarterback. I mean, he looks like the guy. <laughs> Let's talk about a game in the SEC country we can all pick that probably has some interest to Kansas State fans a little bit. Number seven Auburn undefeated at home, four and zero, one and zero in the SEC. Will host Mississippi State. The Bulldogs are three and one. I don't know who they lost to, but Auburn is a twelve point favorite. Mississippi State getting an upset here. Make K State look better, or is Auburn too good? Dy, I, I don't think Auburn's that great to be honest, but I think they win because they're at home. Did you say Auburn's three and one or Mississippi State? Auburn's four and zero. Mississippi State's three and one. And then you and then you were wondering where that loss it came from. Sarcastic. It was. Oh, it was, okay. I, was <laughs> I wish <laughs> so you would let him just do it. I wish you let him just say. Uh, I think it was K State, Dale. <laughs> 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 I just said, hey, you got you right. That one went over yeah. my head. And it's I'm okay. Staring you gotta at be you right now. You gotta be listening. My voice flexion doesn't change when I'm no, joking. No, it does. Gotta it's, be. It's. I don't yeah. give you any any visual no, clues. But you think after three years of this, you would. You would. Auburn. <laughs> I'll make two predictions right now. Uh-huh. Um, Auburn to win this game and Bo Nix to win the Heisman. Bo! Bo Nix win the I tell you Heisman. what, when you get a new guy in here, they, p- they, they pick. <laughs> or next. When you, when you get a new guy in here, they pick a, a Bo oh. to win the Heisman because <laughs> Flanders picked Bo Scarborough from uh, Alabama famously two years ago. Bo Nix. Probably a significantly better pick than Bo Scarborough. <laughs> Scarborough was uh-huh. average like three carries a game that year. But did you see his build? I mean, he looked uh, great. He did. Uh, I love it. Hey, game day. One time Bo course. Stevens will get picked, whoever he plays for. Bo Stevens, offensive tackle for Yeah, he'll get, <laughs> he'll get picked by whoever's the new KSO intern uh, in years to come. Bo, Bo Stevens. Uh, Bo Savage is dominating social media yes, right now. Go Bo. Uh, Bo for some yeah. reason, college game day is in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, for Nebraska against Ohio State, I mean, the Huskers are 3-1. and one. If they were undefeated, you know, I would absolutely get the Nebraska back. Scott Frost ranked Nebraska team. Buckeyes are the, you know, the bullies of the Big Ten. Like, go there. But come on, man. Nebraska lost to Colorado. They almost lost in their first game to who? South, South Alabama. Alabama. They, struggled they struggled to beat Illinois. Lost, they should have lost like, to Illinois. Like, I know you wanted to go there game day because you're going to have 80,000 people there to watch it. And you're going to break some records, and it's going to be a great crowd. I respect all that. But it shouldn't be there. No. And I'll just start. Ohio State's going to beat the dog tar out of Nebraska yeah. Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> Line started at I think fourteen. It ballooned to, to eighteen. Ballooned to eighteen in like twenty four hours. And I agree. I think Ohio State's going to go in there. And what we saw the Nebraska the first three weeks is going to be exposed because it wasn't a fluke. They're going to get handled badly. I know Nebraska played great against Ohio State last year too. I'm well aware. You know, so if there's any Huskers listening, there probably are not. Uh, I, I get it. I just yeah. I think Nebraska is who they've been for the first four weeks. I think Ohio State is, which is, looks really really good. Flanders, don't you dare tell me I'm wrong and pick the Huskers. No, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna pick them to cover. 
Okay. But I think Ohio State still gets the win, yeah. All right, Logan. I have a, I have a buddy that plays for Illinois. And well, there not, we go. They're not very good, and they almost beat Nebraska. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> and, science right there. <laughs> right. And if you're a trans – your uh, method works. Right. <laughs> that's like that's property. the example of when I'm going to type something out that I don't know how to spell, so I change the word to something else. Yes, yeah, I love just, doing that. He just did the verbal version yeah. of that. So I, I'll say yeah. this too: not only is Illinois not very good, remember the week before they played Nebraska, they no. lost to Eastern Michigan. Yeah. Probably looking ahead, getting ready for the Huskers. <laughs> yeah, but you were going to say Lovey Smith's team's really good, <laughs> and you like Nebraska yeah, here. That, that's exactly. Remember, Lovey made a Super Bowl. That seems crazy to think about now. Because he can't even win games at Illinois. No, not at all. Do you like the Buckeyes to cover this 18, or is it closer to that? Uh, closer than that. I think uh, I'd take the points, Ohio State. Man, so three of us like the Buckeyes to just roll Nebraska. Flanders loves the Huskers, thinks they hang yep, around. I think it's a close game. You love Big Red. Go Big Red. We have, <laughs> go Big Red. We have one more. Pac-12 after dark. How many points um, will we <laughs> Washington State falls out of the top 25 after, I mean, one of the most embarrassing <laughs> Losses. UCLA. We, I mean, like, we could talk about this for a while. UCLA, and I say this as somebody who, who said Chip Kelly would be successful there, and I was wrong, so I know how bad they are. Like, I would have – I don't know how it's possible to blow, to blow a 32-point 30, a lead or whatever it is against it UCLA would, I think it was in a game. 63-26 to 26 with five minutes left in the third quarter. I mean, I don't know, man. So is this against Oregon or something? Yeah, or it doesn't matter. Washington State heads to Utah, who oh. has a British play-by-play guy. Is Oregon so? uh, Or excuse me, British sideline guy. Utah. Oregon must be off or not ranked or something. Utah, number 19, 3-1 against Washington State. I'll take Utah because Washington State shouldn't even show up after what they yeah. did in yeah, the fourth take quarter Utah. against Utah. UCLA. Utah. Utah. The problem for Washington State in games like this, I bet they have a – Oh, they'll be ready to go. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the yeah. problem, I bet they have a bad track record under Leach against Utah because Utah is the only school in the Pac-12 that plays defense. And Zach Moss. Run the football. I think this is the one year where, yeah, Mike Leach just dips a little bit, but next year he'll be right back at it, and he's not going to be bounces deep. back. Oh, so yeah, we, they lost too. Yeah. They did. But they for lost real, to check USC. Oregon because I feel like Oregon might be the best team in the Big Twelve and ranked thirteenth. You mean in the you mean in the Pac-12? Pac Sorry, yeah, uh, Oregon, yeah, they're really good. They, I mean, since I think, they lost to Auburn, I think they're oh, off. So they have a loss. They're they lost to Auburn. Auburn. Oh. They were up. Tw- I know they were up twenty, um, twenty-one to six oh, at one point in that game against Auburn, and then they bad coaching. Play, and then they true. lost it. Well, then they sucked it. I, I mean, scrolling. <laughs> Oregon. Well. Heisman Bo Nix. <laughs> Oregon is ranked number 13. Yeah, You're yeah, absolutely right. Is, uh, Heisman with Bo Nix. They're just off this week. I'm yeah. sorry. You well, know, good. I, mean, I, mean, good know, for I, I know what to tell you. The, the Ducks are off. Really they need it. They need it. Oregon I mean, UCLA 1 0 in the Pac 12. Like, DY has really decided to give up on Chip Kelly, but I tell you what. Oh, we, man, we have, those, I mean, listen to their season. Listen how their season started. 24-14 loss to Cincinnati. 23-14 loss at home to San Diego State. 48-14 loss to Oklahoma when Jalen Hurts had yeah. 300 yards so in the first two minutes. So they got drilled. I mean, they lost, they lost, they got drilled. And then they're down. <laughs> thir- I think it was 49-17 at least. I know the score at one point in the third quarter. Um, oh, my Lord. At Washington State, and they come back and win. What was you know how ESPN does like the percent chance of victory? Yeah. <laughs> like, that thing had to be at like three hundred percent for Washington State in the third quarter of that game. Oh, I will Lord. say this: as much as I am not a big Chief Kelly and forecasted that not to work at all, and it probably still won't. It's pretty unbelievable that they still had fight left. Oh, you, no doubt. And I'm joking about it, but I'm just saying credit to them for like yeah. still caring <laughs> after what had happened the first three weeks. twelve, fifteen quarters of their football <laughs> season. How they still cared in that quarter. <laughs> That proves that there's some resilient young men out there. Chip, chip, hooray is what they'll say. <laughs> oh, chip, yeah. hooray. We're going to wrap it up on that point, I believe, because I can't do any better than that. I appreciate Logan Mance both running the board today and commenting, even when I didn't tell him I was going to ask him questions. <laughs> Grant Flanders, yeah, and then Derek Young does a great job, like Trying always. to phase you out still. So. so that wraps it up from Tallgrass Tap House for the KSO Show. Please tell, tell your friends. Your... We should do like friends. Of, let's do like one of those like rounds. All right, are we sing it like a barbershop quartet? Oh yeah, yeah. Quartet, yeah. Let's just know, try. It's like gonna be a f- big fail. But please tell your, your friends. <laughs> <laughs> <That> sucks. <laughs>